Today we're going to continue our discussion on the 1-4-5 chord progression. If you didn't catch the previous video I did on this, be sure to go check it out. Um, in that lesson we talked about a 1-4-5 in a blues context, but in this lesson we're going to look at more of a gospel or country type of 1-4-5. Uh, so I'll play down the rhythm changes now and then we'll break down what's happening in the chord progression. This chord progression is something you might find in like an old gospel tune or a traditional country song. And stylistically, it's quite a bit different than your traditional 12 bar blues form. Now this is a 16 bar form and we're gonna start out with two measures of A major followed by four measures of E7 and then back to two measures of A major. Then as we start the next eight bar sequence, um, we're going to do one measure of A major and then one measure of A7. Now this is a classic use of a secondary dominant where A7 is going to lead us to the four chord, which is D major. And then the second measure of D major, um, I'm using this uh, sharp four diminished chord, which is just a like a chord substitution you can play over the second measure of D going back to A. You don't have to do this, but it's a really common, really nice sound. And then we wrap it up with just uh, A major uh, to the five, and then one and five to finish out the sequence. All right, so now I'll play a pass through of a solo that I wrote over these changes and afterwards we'll discuss some of the different approaches that I'm using over this type of a 1-4-5 progression. <laughs> kind of a New Orleans-y Roomba type feel to it. But this chord progression could just as easily be like a two beat country thing, like a. Right, and so these soloing concepts we're gonna talk about today uh, work equally well in that type of a situation too. Um, so one of the things you might have noticed in my solo is uh, the approach is quite a bit different stylistically than what we talked about in more of the bluesy type one, four, fives. And a big reason for that is the use of the major scale. We're using a lot of the A major scale and the E major scale. Um, in this type of a chord progression, we've got these really strong uh, major triads 
contrasted by these strong dominant chords. So my approach is kind of to play the major scale over those major chords and then think about the arpeggios uh, as the chord changes happen. So I started out this solo uh, with this line, which is um, a pickup playing into the downbeat of the first measure. And uh, I'm kind of implying like an E major chord leading to the one chord A. This lick is sort of like a Roy Buchanan style lick or like a pedal steel type lick. And it's really all out of the E major scale. So I'm just kind of outlining the sound of this E chord leading to A. And as we get to A, I'm landing on the note E, which is a chord tone of the A chord. It's the fifth of the A chord. So it's really important as you're structuring solos and improvising to always be thinking one step ahead, kind of hearing things, anticipating the chord changes, and uh, you know, hearing the melody, but also visualizing the shapes on the fretboard to be there uh, phrasing-wise on the note you want to be on as the chord change happens and targeting the note that you want to hear over that chord. So, right as that chord change happens, I'm right there on the chord tone I want to target of that chord. Then as we move on to the E7 chord, uh, I play this line right out of an E7 arpeggio, which is right out of this E7 arpeggio shape. So really just driving home the sound of that chord by using the chord tones that make up the chord. Then over the second two bars of E7, I do this cool little trick where you can kind of play out of a B minor. Um, if we look at a B minor chord or a B minor triad, as it relates to E, we've got the fifth, flat seventh, and ninth. So we can play, you know, this B minor triad sound over our E7. And what I did was kind of this little uh, walk down from the root to the major seventh, to the flat seventh, and then to the sixth, which gives us uh, the third of our E7 chord. So, and then follow that up by playing out of the A major scale to bring us back to A major. Right, so then as we move into the second eight bars of the progression, we've got a measure of, of A major followed by a measure of A7. And so I'm using these little double stops um, Right, and this is basically just right out of an A major triad, these triad groupings, right? So I'm just playing the top two notes for A. And then as we move to A7, I'm playing the same kind of thing down a whole step to kind of outline like a G almost, a G triad. Because that G note is what really differentiates the A major triad from the A7, the A dominant 7. So I'm really kind of driving in that G sound, right? And then again, targeting a chord tone for the D7, always thinking one step ahead and hearing melodically how I want the line to flow. And then as we get to the sharp four diminished chord, again, just playing right, right out of an arpeggio, right? You can play right out of this arpeggio sheet. And then I'm back to chord tones of A. Um, and then over the E7 again, just thinking about where I am on the fretboard, visualizing the chord shapes, visualizing the arpeggios, and playing right out of an arpeggio, straight up chord tones. And then back to A. So, you know, just stringing together these simple little concepts, playing the A major scale over the A chord, uh, using the arpeggios over the five chord and the four chord and that sharp four diminished. 
and then using the little trick like the um, B minor sound um, over the second part of that E7 chord, we can really put together some interesting solos. So, like I'll just play a little something just kind of off the cuff here, just stringing together some of those ideas and kind of describe it as I go. So, if I play a line out of A major, right, I could play that over the first chord. And then now over the E7, I'll play an E7 arpeggio line. Right, now I can go into my B minor. Right, something like that. And then into the A major scale to get back to A major. Now I can play, uh, continue with the A major and then move to an A7, right? And then target a chord tone from D, because we're moving to D7, so. Right, something like that. And then I can play uh, right out of a D-sharp diminished. And then right back to A. And then, um, you know, there's E7, back to A major, and then I could finish it off with a nice A major scale line. So if I string all that together, you know, I have something like, uh, So right there, keeping it relatively simple, kind of keeping it in one position, but seeing the way these chords connect together and knowing with full confidence where the chord tones are to each chord, and then just using my ear to melodically kind of lead me how I want these phrases to fall. So hopefully this gives you some insight on a different kind of stylistic approach to playing over a 1-4-5. Um, because obviously you've got the blues uh, types of one four fives, but there's a lot of songs that utilize the same harmony. And just by thinking about a few different concepts, you can really tap into some different stylistic approaches. So if you're interested in the solo that I played at the very beginning, um, I'll have the notation and tab for that available on my Patreon, as well as this backing track we're playing over. So uh, please come check that out. And as always, thank you guys for watching. Uh, I really appreciate it. And I'll catch you next time. Take care.